Step number 12 is where you'll devise your measures. As you need to consider, how will you know that a change is an improvement? There are three types of measures that we'll cover in this section, outcome measures, process measures, and balancing measures. This is a really good video that can you watch for a few minutes. It's by Robert Lloyd from the IHI, and he describes here a family of measures, the outcome, process, and balancing measures. I'm going to give a couple of examples of these family of measures. And the first example is through survival after breast cancer. An outcome measure that we'd use typically in this situation is five years survival rate after breast cancer. But obviously you've got to follow a cohort of patients for five years to see if the outcome of this measure. In the meantime, you would use process measures which are often wrapped around best practice. So what you typically look at here with breast cancer patients is the percentage of patients that get appropriate and timely best practice. This is surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy and medication. A balancing measure, often called a barrier measure, is maybe looking at the percentage of patients that were too sick to have all their rounds of chemotherapy. So it would be a knock-on effect or a side effect of, say, some of the treatment. So that would be a balancing measure that you could use. Another clinical example of the family of measures is venous thromboembolism or VTE. An outcome measure for VTE would be, for example, the percentage of orthopaedic patients that get a VTE. You would want this rate to be very low. Process measures, an example here would be the percentage of patients that are screened for VTE preoperatively and you'd want this to be a high rate. Another example is the percentage of at-risk patients that receive prophylaxis. Again, you'd want this rate to be high. And the balancing measures is a side effect of VTE prophylaxis. And this is where you'd want to look at the number and also maybe the percentage of patients that have a post-operative bleed. And now back to David as an example of the family of measures. The outcome measures we'd measure with David could be the measures that have a direct impact on the aim, which are things like kilograms lost and also his BMI. You might want to measure that and that would be an outcome measure. Some of the process measures, these are measures that have an indirect impact on the aim, would be calories burnt and is calories consumed. And the balancing measures might be a side effects or knock on effects of the consequences of changes that you might test. So for example, David might ramp up his exercise regime and what you might measure there as a balancing measure is how often he couldn't exercise because he was injured. You can also add some balancing measures in and other measures after you've got to the change concept stage in your driver diagram. Because often if you come up with ideas of what you want to change, you may often have staff saying, oh, you can't do this, that solution or that change concept because X, Y and Z might happen. Then what you could say to this staff is Let, let's measure how often X, Y and Z actually happens as long as it's not unethical, the types of things that you're trying to change. So further with your devising and measures, what you're really trying to do here is work out how we know that a change is an improvement. So you're going to look at your different primary drivers and work out how much improvement you want and by when. And you can either take an approximation as to how much improvement you want, or you can be more scientific and specific by collecting baseline data and reading the literature. So just a, just an approximation. So with David, how much decrease in calorie intake would he want? He might want to reduce his calorie intake by say 60% within four months. And his exercise, he might want to say increase his calories burnt by 30% within four months. These measures can be tweaked at any of the team meetings, just as long as all the team members are happy about the changes that are made. But basically with a driver diagram, you don't set things in stone. It's not there forever. You can actually change things if you want. You can also gather baseline data. So you might want to do an audit. You might find that David's current BMI is 38 and the literature says that he should have a BMI of 25. So you can actually set your targets, measurable targets in that respect. Also, he doesn't do much exercise. We did a baseline audit and found that he currently burns around 2,300 calories a day. And the literature says that he should burn approximately 3,000. So he actually does need to increase by 30%. He also overeats. He consumes too many calories. A baseline audit found that he, uh, through a calorie counter, says he consumes around 7,500 calories daily, when the literature says he should consume less than 3,000. So he actually does need to reduce by 60%. So you can be a lot more specific in your measures if you've got some baseline data and if you know what, say, best practice is. 
So, for example, with David, he could say that he wants to reduce his calorie intake from 7,500 to less than 3,000 a day. And also with his increasing his calories burnt, he could be more specific to say from 2,300 to over 3,000 a day. So you'd put these measures into your driver diagram into that second column. There's the process measures and another process measure he may want to look at is say reducing his alcohol intake and he might want to reduce it by 80% say within two months. But again, that can be changed if the team, if he and his team think that's too hard or too easy. Another process measure might be that he meets 100% of his exercise goals each week and hopefully he'll be doing that within two months. Some of the outcome measures is him reducing weight with kilos, which is his main aim, and also the BMI, reducing his BMI to 25. What you can do is hyperlink some of these measures through to an Excel spreadsheet from the PowerPoint presentation that this driver diagram sits in. So this is the final driver diagram with all the outcome process and balancing measures that David and his team have devised. Okay, it's your turn to workshop again. So find your driver diagram cheat sheet and look at step number nine. This is where you devise the measures. So look at each of the primary drivers and work out is there anything you can measure there and thinking about how much improvement do you want and by when and document that under the primary drivers. And also look at your secondary drivers and see if there's anything that you can measure and document those under maybe the, the line of the primary drivers. Step 13 is about data collection and measuring impact. So throughout the development of the driver diagram, we came up with lots of outcome process and balancing measures. But what we've got to think about now is how we are actually going to measure these, how we are actually going to collect this data, display the data, and what kind of graphs or charts will we use. So for example, with David, with his calories consumed, how are you actually going to collect the data about him decreasing his calorie intake? That's quite easy to do with this particular measure because you can use that calorie counter from the internet. You can tally up from day to day, at the end of the day, how many calories he's consumed. It's quite an easy thing to do and put that into an Excel spreadsheet. The Excel spreadsheet could look something like this where the first column you've got the day or you could actually put the date. The second column is the actual calories that David's consumed. The third column is the goal. So he wanted to consume less than 3,000 calories a day. And the fourth column is the actual change idea that's been tested via a PDSA. So you can see on day eight, he started to serve his meals on a small side plate to reduce the volume of food eaten. And from the spreadsheet, you can actually then produce an allocated run chart quite easily. And this looks up like this for David's calories consumed. We've got the goal, 3,000 calories a day is where he wants to achieve. And this is from day to day, his calories consumed. The annotation here is where it started to serve his meals on a small side plate, and you can see the impact of that intervention has reduced his calories. So this is a good thing because we want this to be a low rate. The next measure is about calories burnt. And an easy way of collecting this information is on the internet through a calories burnt calculator. So the calories that David burns each day can also be put into the same spreadsheet. And we've done this in looking at the brown font in this particular spreadsheet. So from day to day, David will calculate up the calories burnt each day and also the goal that he wants to achieve is to burn more than 3,000 calories a day. And in the last column in the brown font, we have the change idea of him walking to work to address this particular goal. So if we graph this information and put it into a run chart, it will look like this. So here's an annotated run chart. And with this particular rate, we want a high rate. We want him to burn more calories. And the goal of 3,000 has been achieved on several occasions. This is when he's walked to work. So the annotation here depicts when he walked to work and the effect of that. So this is a good result. Also, another thing David might want to collect information on is his exercise goals that he sets each week. And this can be collected in what we call a tally sheet. So in the first week, he had three goals that he'd wanted to achieve, three, three times he wanted to walk to work, and he achieved two of those three. So 67% of those goals were achieved. Week two, he actually walked to work three times. And then week three, remember, he had five goals he wanted to achieve, to achieve which was to walk to work five times in that particular week, which he got to do 80% of the time. This information could also be graphed in a run chart. And it could look like this. So he wants to achieve 100% of his weekly goals 
And this is the tally that he came up with from week to week. So these are the process measures that we collected. But what we really want to know about is what was the overall impact of the aim? So did David actually lose weight? So those process measures of calories consumed and calories burnt are great to look at and his daily exercise goals being met. He's doing very well, but does he actually lose weight? So what you need to do here is look at your outcome measures. So the weight in kilos and his BMI. So again, in a spreadsheet, in particular columns, you can map this information. So David, at the end of each week, can weigh himself on the scales and his stretch goal is to get to 90 kilos and he's also map his BMI from week to week and his BMI goal is to get to 25 and the last column shows all the different kind of uh, solutions or change concepts that he's tested via a PDSA. Then when you map this and uh, graph it in an annotated run chart, this is his kilograms lost. You can see that after 52 weeks he's reached his goal and also through this annotated run chart you can see the median or the centre line and all the annotations are mapped here. So this particular one is the Pandu study act cycle about how he got to work when he walked and ran and then used his bike and you can see that there has been an impact in him losing weight. Also what you can map on these annotated run charts is areas where you may not have done well, such as when David's son got married, there was wedding celebrations and David didn't do much exercise and he drank too much alcohol and put on a bit of weight. And then further down the line, about week 39, he hurt his legs so he wasn't exercising very much. And we use these smiley faces and sad faces to give an indication about where we're at with the graph. Another one of the outcome measures is David mapping his body mass index or his BMI from week to week. He can calculate this using a BMI calculator from the internet and chart this information from week to week in a spreadsheet. And this run chart shows the information from that BMI that was mapped in the spreadsheet from week to week. David here has a median BMI of around 29 and the stretch goal of 25 is also stated in this run chart. And this is 52 weeks worth of data where you can see his BMI has reduced, which is what we're wanting. Hence, we've got a smiley face indicating that we're happy with the result at the end. What you can do is take your measures and snip and paste them into an A3 page and take them to your meetings and use these smiley faces or ambivalent faces to give an indication about what you think the graph is indicating, whether you're pleased with the result, ambivalent or not happy at all with the result. To learn more about run charts and measurement for improvement, please consider completing the education offering Introduction to Measurement for Improvement video series. Details about this education offering is found on the CEC Quality Improvement Academy webpages and for New South Wales Health staff on the HETI My Health Learning platform.